Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Westover Air Reserve Base. I'm Brigadier General Steve Boatrain. I'm the Wing Commander and Installation Commander out here. And uh, we're having this press conference today because unfortunately uh, I have some bad news that I uh, need to give to the community. And uh, that is that uh, we have found out that we are going to lose uh, eight of our 16 airplanes uh, as well as 334 personnel from the 439th Airlift Wing. Uh, just to give you a little history on where this came from, uh, and I'll give you where we are now and where we're going in the future. Uh, it really began with the uh, force structure announcement that the Air Force came out with in uh, 2012, uh, that due to the uh, Budget Control Act, sequestration, and the Air Force uh, remissioning to uh, new missions as we wind down the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, uh, there are reductions in uh, aircraft across the Air Force, and, and unfortunately we were a part of that. Uh, the news was that, that we would be losing eight of our airplanes uh, as the uh, eight models are being retired out of Lackland Air Force Base in Texas, that uh, eight of ours, when they get upgraded to M models, would go to Lackland, leaving us with eight here. Uh, that announcement came out. It was followed up by the uh, National Defense Authorization Act of uh, FY13 uh, in there. It also had the cut, there was a caveat, that the retirement on those uh, 16 A model C5s was uh, delayed until the release of a, a mobility requirements and capability studies to be done. Uh, and that study ha has been completed and the uh, A models uh, will be retired. So they're pressing forward with the uh, movement of the aircraft. Uh, we had a, a site activation task force that uh, came out here last week. Uh, those are the folks who come from uh, headquarters Air Force Reserve Command to uh, look at units that will be having big changes like this and uh, working through the, the changes. We received the outbreak from that, and that was pretty much the uh, final word that, uh, yes, we would be losing the airplanes. Uh, the first one would go into uh, M-model upgrade in March of 2015, and uh, then the personnel loss would uh, begin in FY16, which actually be October of uh, 2015. We would get our first M-model back in June of 2016. Uh, in the interim there, some airplanes would be coming back to us upgraded as their models, and some would be going to Lackland. So the number would steadily draw down from that time from 16 down to 8. Uh, we should have our uh, full complement of 8 M models, uh, according to the schedule, by uh, April of 2018. Uh, the, the schedule on this and the numbers are not finalized. They're still working on that. We wanted to get the word out to the public that uh, it's going forward and also let our folks know uh, what's going to be happening. Uh, as we get the plan and we start working our way through this, we're going to take care of our people. Uh, the numbers, uh, the 334 is made up of uh, 59 full-time people and 275 part-time or our traditional reservists. We should be able to absorb the uh, full-time people under the wing through vacancies and uh, double billeting positions. We'll work on that to try to keep the full-timers employed. Additional reservists will be a little more difficult since it's such a large number. We will be able to uh, retain quite a few of them. Uh, we might have to retrain some in different positions. Uh, some of them will probably elect retirement because they're retirement eligible. Uh, we'll work with uh, units in Massachusetts and surrounding states and see if we can uh, get them jobs uh, in uh, Connecticut at Bradley or over at Barnes and Otis, uh, maybe down in uh, Rhode Island. Uh, but we'll work with the units to see if we can actually uh, get them jobs uh, continuing in the Air Force Reserve or in the uh, Air National Guard. Uh, and then the Air Force Reserve Command actually has a clearinghouse for any that we can't place locally that uh, they have jobs all over the uh, Reserve, all over the U.S., uh, and they'll try to place some other positions. So we're going to take care of our people. We'd like to be able to keep them all here if possible. Uh, we probably won't be able to do that, but we'll keep as, as many as we can. Um, as far as the future goes, uh, this is definitely not the end of the 439th Airlift Wing or Westover. Uh, we will still be here. We'll be a smaller wing, but we'll continue to be the best strategic airlift wing in the Air Force. And we fly in our uh, 8C5Ms uh, and also still supporting all of our other mission areas like security forces, medical, civil engineers, everything we do out here at Westover. Westover is going to stay here for a long time. We'll remain strong. Uh, it's a wonderful base. We have great support from the community and uh, we plan on being here for the long haul. Thank you very much, and uh, I can take questions at this point. Could our lawmakers, our congressmen, or senators have done more to prevent this? Uh, I don't know if they really could have done more. I know they've done all that they can, and uh, they are still contending with their efforts. Uh, it's really that we have decided to go forward with the plan, 
but uh, there probably will still be efforts by the legislators to, to do something about this. But we need to uh, let our people know and, and press on with the plan uh, while that occurs in the, their arena. What has been the reaction of the people here? Uh, sadness, you know, mostly because uh, it is a great wing and we do such a great job here uh, that, uh, you know, due to uh, changes in the force structure, you know, they, they realize that with the way budget uh, is going on and you know, the way the Air Force is changing, that there aren't going to be changes, but really is shocking when it gets home. Uh, so I think most of them are taking it well. Uh, I've had the opportunity to brief, um, you know, quite a few people in person uh, over the previous weekend. We had our unit training activity. Uh, so it, it's dismaying to them. Um, you know, they're, they're holding up well, and that will take care of them. Why General Wesker, you know? not some other places? Well, we are actually among many other bases that are going through this. Um, you know, you can watch the news and see that uh, because of the, the, the previous four structure announcement, there are uh, bases all over the United States that are being affected by this, and this is just our local piece of it. The Air Force overall is, is getting smaller and having less aircraft, and uh, this is just Westover as part of that. General uh, Governor Patrick uh, appointed a task force in 2012 to work with all of the military bases in Massachusetts to try to, you know, avoid downsizing and cutbacks. Have you had interaction with that task force, and do you think it's been effective at all? Yes, we uh, we interact with the task force quite often, and uh, I have spoken to them uh, personally, and I've spoken to the governor, and uh, they do everything they can to help us, but this is a uh, overall uh, a big problem for the U.S. in general, just because of our uh, budget crisis that we're having, and the Air Force, you know, in order to uh, remain within the budgetary limits and to adjust to new mission groups, uh, is having to make these cuts. Uh, it's unfortunate it's here. I know that the governor has done everything he can to help us out, and I'm sure he'll continue to, to try to help us uh, through this. General, you mentioned the, uh, the, the the number of cuts, the number of positions that are being lost. Have have, have those uh, those individuals been affected? Have they been notified individually? That, that no, we have not uh, actually received the uh, final unit manning document that's uh, still being worked on, uh, because there'll be a unit manning document change. We'll know what the positions are at that time, and there'll also be a programming plan that comes out that'll have the exact timeline. Uh, the numbers I've given you that they're all preliminary, but we want to make sure we got the word out. Once we get more final details on that, we'll let you know, and we'll definitely be working with the people. When we find out what the individual positions are, we'll uh, work personally with each one of those people to see what we can do to help them through this. So even though you say that this hasn't been finalized, but it sounds like it actually has been finalized. It's, uh, we received the outbreak from the SATAP, and they, they said, yeah, this is how it is going to be. It's, it's, uh, it's finalized, but the details, all of the minute details of which specific positions uh, and the timeline on the airplanes uh, has been changing the uh, the C5M uh, modification line. Some of the airplanes take longer than they plan, so that will probably change as well, but there'll be minor changes. So rather than waiting until it is absolutely final done deal, which probably will never be exactly final, uh, we want to get the, the word out now. We're starting to talk to our folks uh, just to let them know. Well, I was just going to ask about, Westover has a strategic position to Europe that I know has been very important and to the Middle East as well. It's been very important during uh, our, our wars in the Middle East. Um, these planes are going to go to, to Texas, correct? To yes. Lackland? Um, that doesn't have the same strategic position I would think that Westover has to Europe and the Middle East. No, the, uh, the Air Force and Air Force Reserve took that into account when they were doing the, the plan for where the airplanes are going to go. And uh, Lackland will actually also be the training center for the C-5Ms. So they'll have the, uh, the C-5s there to do the training, plus they'll be flying missions. Uh, and also, just to mention, along with that, the total number of C-5Ms will be 52. And uh, so we'll be doing the same mission with a less number of airplanes. But the reliability of the rate, of the reliability rate of the C-5M is better than the C-5B. So we'll continue to do the same amount of missions. We'll just be doing it with less airplanes that are more reliable. When do you expect a final decision to be made and, and people being notified in terms of Well, the, uh, when, when the unit manning document and the programming plan comes out, we've been told to expect that in about a month. Uh, so as that works its way through the headquarters and they determine the positions and all that, they'll send it out to us and that will be pretty much the book of this is how you'll go through the conversion. So about a month.